I'd just like to start off by saying that I was really pleased to see that the minister recognizes that people with disabilities and people power has a place alongside government in finding solutions to issues uh, that are affecting the lives of people with disabilities in Ireland and their families. Uh, the minister also spoke of people moving out of congregate settings. And I would just have to say, just as a thought, housing is a huge issue. There is not enough accessible built homes to go ahead with any plans to move people out of congregate settings in large numbers. And I think that although we've gone a long way in moving homes towards visitability, there's really no point in being able to visit a home if you have to sleep on the side of the road that night because there's no homes built that you can actually live in. Just, just something to think about. Um, okay, I believe that in the, all of the things that these people have been talking about, I do believe that it takes a village to raise a child. And I think that nobody can be on their own in this life. I believe that uh, a person, however, before informal supports are put in place or before somebody can become a part of their community, I really believe that if a person needs it, they should have the PA services provided to them before natural supports kick in. This, if a person has a PA, it allows them the dignity and respect of being on a level playing field to make friends. It allows them equality with family members and it allows them to be part of their community without the community feeling that the person needs to be taken care of and sort of like, oh God, here they come again, you know? This way people will look forward to your company. With the reduction in PA services, more people with disabilities are going to become very isolated because communities may not feel that they should become the support network for that person. Yes, they maybe include them in certain things, but especially in more rural, isolated communities, that person's going to become extremely isolated. Informal supports are a fantastic idea so long as the government don't start to see this. And it's so important that the government do not see informal supports as a cop-out for them so that they don't have to spend the money and produce the resources to allow people to have their choice of PA services that then put them on an equal playing field to have their other informal supports. Peer support is always very good because it's very, very difficult for somebody who, even somebody with a disability who does not have the same type of a disability as yourself or who does not experience the same problems that you may experience because of your disability, or for families, who for them to be able to talk to families who also experience the same problems as they have. So I think that uh, peer support is beneficial to everybody. It's like two women getting together, and my husband hates when this happens, and you know, we, we might have a row, and two women would get together, two married women, and you'd say, oh, you know what he did? And she'd say, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. But, uh, whereas, you know, you wouldn't go along to some man and say, oh, you know what he did? And the guy would be saying, well, so? <laughs> he just wouldn't understand. So I think that peer support with folks with disabilities is very important. And not only for building the self-esteem of somebody who maybe has a low self-esteem, but also people can give each other hints and tips and you know, families can get ideas on how to make life easier for themselves. I think that 
inclusion is a two-way street. And I was very interested in, I can't remember which of our speakers now said it, about the Scottish theatre company that only will give admittance to people who have disabilities. That's discrimination, guys. Works two ways. It's a two-way street. If somebody without a disability or somebody with a disability was to go to a theatre company and say, I'd like to take part, and they went, sorry, you have a disability, the newspapers would be jumping all over it in a heartbeat. It's a two-way street there. Um, people with disabilities, I find that from listening to the talks and from personal experience, often have low self-esteem, especially if it's somebody who was born with their disability. Because until quite recently, people with disabilities have been very ostracized from society in Ireland. No accessibility, lack of transport, no transport, no accessible transport in rural areas. And so on many occasions, for people to start with, with disabilities, to start to build friendships, they're not really working from an even basis. Until recently, many people with more significant disabilities were sent away to so-called special schools. And so when they came home, they didn't know their peers. And so what if would have come naturally to children to play with each other, that was taken away. And so I think that it's gonna take a while, maybe one or two generations before Kids who do not have disabilities will see their peers who do have disabilities as being just exactly the same as them. But the good thing is that I think they were moving in that direction. Children uh, being educated together is vital in stopping a lot of the problems that we have now in overcoming a lot of the situations. Because like I said, if children grow up together and the parents of those children grow up together, there's a better understanding. And so I think that the natural supports will form more naturally down the road because it'll have been there from day one in a community. You know, Johnny will be part of the community not Johnny was sent away to school till he was 20 and then suddenly arrived back and nobody knows what to do. I was really interested in uh, the personal networks in Canada and I was really interested in uh, the relationships are key for everyone. And I love the idea of the personal connector and I think, this is just personally, I think that this could work extremely well, especially in more rural areas like in the west of Ireland. I think this could work very, very well because there are not only people with disabilities who are isolated in those communities who would have similar interests, but people without disabilities too. And all it would take is one person to start maybe a little club or a little afternoon tea or whatever, to bring like-minded people together. I think it's got endless possibilities. That's a really exciting thing. And it doesn't cost any money, so uh, it would make everybody very happy. Um, in Ireland, relationships really are the key to life. You know, they're the key to people getting jobs. Like everybody in the room knows somebody who got a job based on who they know, not what they know. You know, everybody knows somebody who managed to get a better deal on something, not who they know, what they know. And personally, um, I think that, so this idea of the personal connector, that's where it comes in, and I really, really like this idea. Um, but, you know, sometimes I think that do we stop people with disabilities from taking the risks of making friends? 
I ran a youth club in Limerick for uh, four years and not one child with a disability came. And it was because their parents were afraid to let them mix with their non-disabled peers. You know, so do we take it too far in the opposite extreme? In the, in the UK, there are a large number of hate crimes. It seems to be mainly bullying and harassing. In Ireland, many times, especially in the schools, bullying is seen as horseplay. And until recently, the schools haven't really taken this very seriously. Disability hate crime is also rife on social networking sites such as Facebook in the form of pictures or groups demeaning or threatening people with certain disabilities. And that's really hard to deal with too because it, it's not coming from within the country necessarily. And I, I was very, very moved by that horrific story that you told, Dale. But, you know, and I understand people working to protect people with disabilities. But I'm wondering in our own country, have we gone a little too far? Like, for instance, you have to have guard clearance for everything. And it's not just once you, you get guard clearance to become a scout leader, then you've got to go back again two weeks later and reapply again to become a youth leader, then you've got to go back two weeks later and apply to become a PA. So are we, have we taken it one step too far? And having said that, how do we protect against the people of trust who are abusing the trust with the most vulnerable in our society? Thank you.